Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from the Red Lessons channel. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really hope that you're all doing well. And I just want to say a couple of things in this video. The first thing that I want to do is I want to take a moment to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart. My most sincere gratitude goes out to all you girls and guys who have been so incredibly supportive of me and this endeavor that I recently announced on the Red Lessons channel. So for those of you who are just tuning in, if you really have no idea what I'm talking about, a few days ago, I published a video in which I revealed that there is a project that I've been working on for the past year and a half. So for the past 18 months, I have been working on this project. This is a very exciting endeavor. It's something that I've been keeping hush hush about uh, just because I really didn't want to reveal anything until it was fully set in stone. I had all my ducks in a row, all my T's crossed and my I's dotted. And I feel like the time is finally now. The time has come. And so I recently hit or I am going to hit, I should say, 100,000 subscribers. I think I'm like 300 subscribers away from reaching that milestone or that goal, which is the biggest milestone that I've ever hit on this channel. So thank you so much for being one of those subscribers. It truly means the world to me. And thank you for believing in me and what I'm doing. And so a lot of people have been overwhelmingly supportive in the last video. Thank you so much. I want you to know that I read every single comment. I reply to every single comment. And if you look down in my videos, you can see that that's evident. I will not uh, overlook any sort of advice or recommendations that I receive from my subscribers. So thank you for being you and really just interminable support that you have shown me. Uh, it will never go unappreciated. So thank you. I love you all. The second thing that I want to do in this video is I want to take a moment to reveal who my perfumer is. Uh, but before I do so, I just want to go through what the process was like in delineating or determining who my perfumer would be. And so with all of these videos that I make in regards to this brand that I have been working on, I want to make sure that I don't provide empty value that I make videos that also give you a behind the curtains look or a sneak peek into the happenings of the fragrance industry because certainly there's a lot that I've learned over the past year and a half and whatever I can convey to my subscribers and make you that much more educated or knowledgeable or in the know about what happens with these things I think the better we'll both be equipped uh, to sort of discern and analyze different fragrances in the future and so what I thought about was if I'm going to pick a perfumer to make fragrances for me or a fragrance for me, uh, it would need to be somebody whose entire body of work I am familiar with. That doesn't necessarily mean every last fragrance that he or she has composed, but I need to have a really strong sense of familiarity with the types of fragrances that they've made. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to look at is, is there a particular genre that I feel as though this perfumer could execute very well? And so that's not to say that perfumers aren't versatile. They're incredibly versatile. You can have some perfumers create something that's very dark and smoky and resinous and challenging and then in the same breath or on the other side of the same coin they can make something that's very light and floral and wispy and sensual. And so there's always going to be that dichotomy there. Uh, but of course this is one perfumer whose work I looked at time and time again and I said this person is an absolute genius. And so I knew in the back of my mind that you know over the past few years I would say if I were ever to be given the opportunity to work with a certain perfumer, um, I certainly had some names in mind. And of course, I also wanted to take a look at my subscribers because ultimately this is for you, uh, this is for the end consumer, this is for the person who's going to walk in the store, smell it off the shelf and say, wow, this is amazing, this is a breath of fresh air. This is something that I never expected and something that I haven't encountered before at a very reasonable price for a niche quality fragrance. And so when I was taking a look at my YouTube analytics, and obviously I also took a look at the videos, which videos do the best, which brands are getting the most uh, viewership on my channel, uh, what fragrances you're coming back to me time and time again and saying, you know, Stephen, based off of your recommendation, I purchased this fragrance and I ended up loving it. And so, of course, I'm also utilizing a lot of that as my means of determining what fragrances would do well and resonate with people and which ones won't. But at the same time, I needed to stay true to myself and I needed to make fragrances that I genuinely and sincerely would love to wear, where I would wake up in the morning, look at the fragrance and say, it doesn't matter what mood I'm in, I know I'm going to feel as though I made the 
the right decision when I spray this on. And so, of course, it is a personal endeavor, and these are all fragrances that cater to my personal taste. And so, if you feel as though your taste resonates or aligns with mine, I have a really good feeling you would like these fragrances too. So I had an opportunity to take a look at my channel's demographics, which I do from time to time anyway, and I noticed that 86% of my subscribers are male and 14 are female. And most of my male subscribers are between the ages of 25 and 34. And so if that sounds like you, you're definitely in the majority, and I know that that's me as well. I'm 31 years old, I'm still rather young according to my standards, and so I wanted to wear something that would uh, work really well for me when I'm in a business setting, when I can wear this to work, but also something that I could wear on a night out, something that smells really good, something that I can feel very confident wearing when I, you know, go to a really nice restaurant with my wife and I treat her out to a nice dinner or something like that. And so in order to create something like that, of course, it did mean having to source the right perfumer, having to write very loose briefs, having to be super patient. So patience is the name of the game. A lot of people don't know this, but you write a brief and you you expect to get one laboratory sample back, you actually get like four or five laboratory samples back. You'll have version A and version B. And so you'll have a fragrance that smells like what you would expect according to the brief, but then you'll have a completely different balance of ingredients. And then you'll also have each one available in a couple different concentrations. So to give you an example, we had the fragrance in 21% concentration and 23% concentration. And so it's about waiting until it macerates for four to six weeks because after the maceration process, which is when you let it sit in the alcohol for about a month or a month and a half, it actually does give off the impression that it becomes one to two percent stronger. And so you can better assess the diffusiveness, the projection, and the longevity of the fragrance. And so it's one thing to get the package in the mail and you want to rip it up and you're so eager and excited to smell it. And it's another thing to say, you know what, I'm going to be really patient. Let me work on some other creative things and I'll revisit this in a couple of weeks. And so it's been a long and arduous process, but like I said, it's all been a labor of love. And I'm here to tell you who my perfumer is, and so here it goes. Um, there's actually a bit of a twist ending here because I've actually been working with more than one perfumer. And the reason for this is because I wanted to curate a number of different fragrances all of which smell different from one another. Yes, I did want to have a sweet fragrance and I wanted to have an utterly fresh fragrance and I wanted to have a really dark and complex fragrance. And so I have more than one fragrance and I have been more working with more than one perfumer and they are as follows. Bertrand du Chafour, uh, Chris Carbonell, and Jorge Lee. So I went with these three people because they are among the best, in my personal opinion, that the industry has to offer. I mean, having owned so many of their creations, if we're talking about Bertrand du Chafour, you have Jubilation 25, Incense Avignon by Comme des Garçons, all of the Lardison Parfumer fragrances that he's made. Then you think of somebody like Chris Carbonell, and he's made Panda, the reformulated version in Camel by Zoologist. He's made Zerzhov in Sospiro fragrances. He's made Kajal fragrances. Then you have somebody like Jorge Lee, who has done Nishan Istanbul and Al Gabra, everything from Passion Choco to Haseva to Karagyoz, and I just love their work. And I knew that given the opportunity, these are the perfumers that I knew would be best capable of carrying out this project. And so it's been such an honor and a pleasure. And every time that I think about it, it's so surreal. And I'm so humbled and flattered and made to feel inferior in their presence whenever I think of the fact that these people actually actually helped me bring this project to market and to fruition and you know being able to envision my ideas for what I wanted these fragrances to smell like and it's been such an honor to have the opportunity to work with great minds like Bertrand du Chafour, Chris Carbonell, and Jorge Lee. I am so excited for you to smell their fragrances. I know this is something that's going to wow people. It's something different, something unique. It's a completely new concept, something that hasn't been done before. I think everybody will be pleasantly surprised at the attention to detail and not just with the fragrances themselves but also with the presentation the premium finishes the boxes the sleeves the bottles the caps just everything about it is um all i can say is i went all out with it and so i want to thank you all so much for watching 
Thank you so much for being supportive, of course, as more information becomes available to me and there's a lot of legal work that needs to get done behind the scenes, but as more information is set in stone and solidified, I will be revealing more in time, but Bertrand Duchafour, Chris Carbonell, and Jorge Lee are my perfumers. I'm so incredibly excited and they've been nothing short of amazing. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. I love you guys. We'll see you soon.